Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. Happy Thursday, July 4th, 2024. Happy Independence Day to all those that celebrate and observe the day for all that it's worth. Today is an interesting day for me. Um, in the past few years plus, I've learned to transmute the frequency of the day to be more of a celebration of independence um, in a spiritual sense than I can even holistically attribute to uh, a societal celebration, you know, or, or national day of observance. It's just, you know, if you're a person of color, particularly born and raised in this country, then you already know how bittersweet the observance is when sometimes there feels like there's still so much more left to be desired to truly celebrate, you know? And strangely enough today, all over my timeline were all these posts about civil rights and um, particularly like reflections from the 50s and 60s, either ref um, reflections on that time from those that lived it or actual um, you know, retro video from that time, uh, like particularly like a round table discussion of sorts from some of the most prominent, with some of the most prominent um, civil rights leaders at that time, one including Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King, leading up to the March on Washington, which was footage that I had never seen. Like it was definitely educational for me but I, I found it wasn't like I went looking for any of this because like I said it's like when you live here and you love here legitimately because I do maybe I should say that clearly as my disclaimer that I would not want to be from any other place in the world and at this time there's really nowhere else that I'd, I'd rather be which is the strange, bittersweet reality of it all, is that for all intents and purposes, this is home, you know? And there's no place like home, really and truly. Um, but I didn't go looking for, for any of these, um, any of these things. They just happened to pop up, you know? They, they, they popped up. You know, maybe other people that are synergized with my algorithm to some degree were engaging these energies today because of exactly the spirit of expression that I'm sharing now. But I was I was intrigued to watch, you know, and really like reflect on how much things have changed and yet how much things really haven't in a lot of ways but yet still how much things are changing all the same in a way that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard there have been no witnesses to see the drastic change that we are about to incur not just as a nation but as creation and, you know, the United States is significant because for so long it has led the charge to be 
kind of the trendsetters of the rest of the world, or at least where everybody kind of looks to to gain inspiration or take a cue here or there culturally, if nothing else. And, you know, once upon a time I said in a message that, you know, the universe listens to what you profess and it, then it it more or less um meets you in that in that identity and now in this lifetime i believe that finally this nation is really going to be charged and i mean that in the most progressive way possible to actually live the creed that it has been founded upon. It truly is the land of the free and the home of the brave. But that ideal of liberty and justice for all must be reconciled one way or another the universe is coming to en wow. engage that profession um, and to, to more or less uh, out, you know, the, the more aggressive way to, to see it is to call it bluff but the more progressive way to see it, I think, is really just to I don't know how to say it, but because it's not really a confrontation, it's a confirmation. There it is. For some, it may seem confrontational because the way that the spirit works to harmonize imbalanced frequencies isn't all always you know pass it certainly usually isn't passive because that pendulum has to swing back from where it may have been far right or left at any particular time to get back to center but it's to confirm the profession of the faith and foundation of this nation. Of which many have fought for, championed for, shed blood, sweat, and tears for. And to the same token, many have resisted, interrupted, impaired, destroyed, You know, there's been two sides of the, of the spectrum that now get to converge somewhere in harmony in the middle. And by God, I don't know exactly how that gets to be or the precise time of when, but I know that it's happening right before our eyes. And so, as I said, it's a bittersweet day. You know, because before I started watching all that stuff, it was just like the normal way that I would celebrate 4th of July, which in, in seasons past has been very patriotic. You know, my church used to participate in the parade um, every year, and we were like one, <laughs> almost a display of sorts because my church is in... Um, and, his, and his, a historically white town, not so much now, but <clears throat> Magnolia, New Jersey, <clears throat> is where my home church still is, where I grew up, you know, where I was born into. Um, and we would participate in the parade every year as one of the first black churches founded <clears throat> in that town. My church has a very long legacy over a hundred years back. And 
everything it was very whitewashed except for us and maybe like a couple specks of color here and there and other organizations but for the most part we were like the centric you know population of power <laughs> of, of power Ooh, mm, didn't mean to say that of color is what i meant to say but yeah no, take it as you will so you know that was kind of a thing that i looked forward to and then of course like everybody else is you know black people really don't need no reason to barbecue anyway we'll do it for for you know shits and giggles but give us a holiday <laughs> and we show sure enough gonna fire up the grill so there was that <clears throat> also to look forward to and then of course who doesn't love fireworks you know i love fireworks on a random day when you you know hood fireworks that you don't expect to go up and it's like ooh, quick little show and spectacle so all of that you know was something that i was fully engaged and invested in at some point in time but like i said over the past few years or so go figure if you think about the timing is when my investment began to shift and because of my allegiance to home as it is and more so my commitment to the progression that I foresee of it to be truly a place of comfort you know for all you know but particularly for those that have felt less welcome for almost ever um I still feel a connection to the day and the observance, but I make it make sense for me. I make it mean something. I'm not like many black people nowadays that um, that kind of like embrace Juneteenth as the alternative and almost reject July 4th because I feel like the both have a space to exist. And in some cases, one doesn't really exist without the other, you know, and, and probably a great deal of cases that is true. Um, so I make it mean something to me, which a celebration of independence, of freedom, of autonomy, of sovereignty, of liberation, even within the construct of society as we know it, this country as, we know it is still something worth reverencing and so i do um but the the confrontation of those images and the reflections and the memories and the education and the enlightenment that i gained today just in you know a couple handful of YouTube posts that I didn't even mean to stumble upon, you know, really put things into a different perspective for me. And I'm not even holistically sure how so, but it's, it hits different this year. So... I'll take that as a true testament, as I said, to the, I guess, uh, I want to say prophecy of change that is already fulfilled, but that we are but I guess that's being pronounced through our everyday waking lives, you know, in some, in some part in ways that we probably can't even really tell, you know, can't even really sense that fulfillment of because we're in the midst of it, perhaps because we are it, you know, but if that is the case, then I allow I I would like to allow that to take precedence over the slight bout of despair that I sensed 
just in the sheer realization of how long the same command has been made for just the simple liberties in life not just beyond you know so far removed as as you know post civil war you know right after slavery which we can all be a bit detached from cuz it kind of seems ancient even though it isn't but considering the 50s and 60s of which most of us i assume probably have a parent that was born at that time or and or a grandparent at least an auntie or uncle somebody you may even have been a product of those um decades yourself so it's like it's so far away but yet really we're really not that far removed and yet and still the same plea for liberty is made so take that as you will Tomorrow is the new moon in Cancer, which ironically, you know, as I said, like with this country, there's no place like home. There's no other place right now that I have any knowledge of that I would say like, oh, I want to be there, you know, to visit, to explore, to adventure. Sure. But I, I like it here. All things considered. But just as you like to feel you're safe and secure in the place you lay your head, hang your clothes, eat your, eat your meals, cleanse your body, wherever you retire to at the end of the day, you would want it to feel like sanctuary is the same ideal and not even an ideal it's it's the same insistence I have as a matter of fact for the country that I call home and I, I, I do believe that we're in for some very um, very profound changes in a way in ways that are going to make it more comfortable for those that have often been the ones making it more comfortable for others you know it's like that that the host you know of a party where they spend all their time or most of their time throughout the party making sure every, all the guests are served taken care of everybody's having a good time you know, the laughs are flowing, the drinks are filled, the food is good. Hot, you guys all right? Everybody good? Everybody get enough to eat? You, you, you guys need anything? And it's like, did you even eat? You know, like you usually don't eat or the, are the last to eat. You might have a sip of a drink here and there on the run, you know, but your main concern has been making sure that everybody else is taken care of. And then by the end of the night, what you got to do, but when everybody's gone, you're the one that's got to clean up and put, put everything back together. It's like time to be the, the guest of honor in the place that you call home, in the space that you've made home, made comfortable for everyone else. You get to enjoy the festivities too now. And if that means that some guests might have to get their own drink or get their own napkin, you know, or get, get their own seconds because it's buffet style and I ain't serving, you know, it's, it's time for everybody to, to cater to themselves in the way that they can make themselves most comfortable without infringing on other guests. We can all have a good time. We can all enjoy the party. But now the host really gets to okay. 
enjoy, to celebrate. So, <laughs> Five of Pentacles. And this is the discomfort of those that have been displaced without a home, without resources, without security, stability, shuffling from place to place, in despair, poverty stricken, looking for shelter, finding none. Wow, to the Ten of Pentacles. Generational wealth. Wow. It's, it's, it's high time. It's only fair, it's only right. Yeah, with the nine of pentacles here at the bottom. Just for everyone to be able to fairly take care of themselves, take care of their own, be secure within the life that they create for themselves without fear of it being, um, of it being attacked, torn down, um, infiltrated. When you really think about it, you know, like one of the things that makes me sad is the great disparity in generational wealth from post-slavery into, or I, sh I guess I should say post-Civil War to now where land was stolen from folks unjustifiably, unlawfully, really, if you really, when you, when you hear the stories and the accounts, countless um, examples, occurrences of where people occupied a certain space, a certain land. I mean, hell, <laughs> sound familiar? even with the celebration of today where the land was occupied, right? But countless um, occurrences of where the people had a righteous right, maybe even an inherited right to the land that either were swindled out of, out of it with legal um, loopholes and things, or it just was out, or it was like, manhandled from them, you know, like they were even, um, t it was taken under duress. And also like the, the, the moments in history where, you know, cause you can, you hear a lot of the feedback if you're not a brown person or a black person, but specifically a lot of feedback and the adverse, um, rhetoric about what black people have done to themselves or what they have not done for themselves. But then when you really reflect in history about the moments in time where black people were quite self-sufficient, built communities when they were kept out of the societal order of things, built um, generational wealth on their on the backs of their own hide, you know, like had things to pass down to their children, to their progeny, things to be proud of, S stabilized communities to be self-sufficient without any need of government, outside um, support, even acknowledgement. People just wanted to live their simple lives without any resistance willing to almost isolate themselves within society, the society that, you know, they sit in 
just to get get along and go along with life and then you'd have that com that whole community burned down to the ground or flooded out or everybody ran out of town because of all of the incessant violence and aggression and this is not me just harping on black and white issues because if you know you know that that's the facade to keep us all at odds with each other like it's just exclusive to black against white or white against black it's a much more sinister spirit at play here what makes me sad is the victims on both ends because they're the ones that stand that have stood to be affected by circumstances as they are but there are also those those that are the perpetuators or perpetrators of these obscenities that ultimately victimize themselves by way of the karmic retribution that must come back around, which is why I say that some people will be made to feel uncomfortable. When we talk about generational curses that we all have been charged to break, generational cycles, we've all carried that charge in one way or another to do something different than what we've been conditioned to do, whether that be by familial exposure or conditioning, societal, cultural, whatever, religious, whatever it is, there's a charge there. And, and there are some that may, have, may not have quite answered to that charge in totality to reform that spirit of corruption, or I should just say that corrupted spirit, because I don't even know if it's just limited to corruption. Let's just say that corrupted spirit one way or another. And and on both sides, mind you, the ones that have been been most inflicted, you know, by it, victimized, as you like to see, and those that have been more aggressive in the way of it both have had a charge and it seems to be unfair and unbalanced especially to a large degree for those that have been victimized you know that have been on the receiving end of most of the trauma there's we still had a charge on our head to do something different despite that to find high to get to higher ground to some degree, to still find our way to independence and security and empowerment, no matter what. And it's just going to look real interesting as this pendulum is settling toward the middle as to how that plays out. Because some, are, some are, are going to be quite uncomfortable in this equalization that's taking place once it finally settles. Because the same privileges that have progressed some really don't exist anymore. Even though it kind of seems like they do, it's just, it's just holding on to their life for survival itself because it can't exist in the evolution of creation anymore, not in the way that the universe ordains because it's no, it's, it's not, it's not in the, an order of productivity for creation overall. It never really was, as I say all the time, except for to kind of strengthen, you know, like the tried and true 
charge and challenge for those that maybe have have been oppressed. I, I'm still kind of working out why it had to be that way, but you know, because maybe that in itself is a bit of an illusion for us to almost think that it did when in fact, maybe a large part of it really didn't and really wasn't supposed to be. And that could also be the aggression of the equalizing as the universe is, is, um, is, is, uh, I don't even know what the word is. Like it's, it's doing it. <laughs> like, I don't know what word that would be, but you know, how it is going about harmonizing those frequencies. It could be on account, the, aggre the aggression of that process may be actually because of what has been so unjustifiably and unrighteously out of balance for, for way too long. There may have been some of this that was kind of like universally ordained or like you know in order more or less but some of this may I, maybe it's just it's been way out of bounds and way out of step for a long long time it's like when you you may have we've had some we've had our training ground one once one way or the other you know on whichever side of education and conditioning was necessary and then somewhere along the lines like it just it just it's like we we were we were here too long or in this place in this ideal in this spirit for too long it's like something some other spirit was like holding everybody back from graduating when we should have all been throwing our caps in in the air by now or something like that i don't know but either way that spirit will have a great deal to answer to as well if that is true hella fireworks that sound like bombs. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yep, and here's the moon card. The mysticism of it all, like who knows? And the sun, wow. I'm gonna go ahead and take that out with the, with the, um, the King of Wands. Well, there it is. The polarities of light and dark, night and day. That all that was hidden and unknown and mystical is being revealed. being exposed and being revealed for all to be enlightened one way or another. So these questions that I have in spirit perhaps are being answered in truth. And they, they may be answered by way of the the dispensation of, of retribution that takes place. How, how anyone fares, you know, cause that will no longer be hidden. You, you won't be able to, to hide the spirit behind money or privilege or power. All will be exposed. And that becomes the currency, the purest of passion. What you've done with it, how you've asserted it, how you have mastered your um, desires and maybe even lusts, ambitions,
perhaps that's the that's ultimately like the qualifier of yeah your temptations how you've managed yourself in the throes of temptation of the temptation to just be primal to be human you know to almost abandon spirit what does that look like? That's going to be revealed and what is dispensed. This is inheritance of, you know, the Ten of Pentacles. Ooh. Holy inheritance is what I hear, though. I'm going to take the strength card. This is too many cards over here that I'm balancing. Let's see what's on the bottom. Wow. Destiny and fate. And this is exactly what I was saying. Like, how did you manage your primal and spiritual nature under great stress, under great temptation? under in in the um provocation of the spirit of fear is what is determining fate and fortune for all even the universe on whole Because there's so much about what we will to be as human beings that makes more of an impact and an impression than we have yet to truly perceive. And that may be another revelation, maybe inheritance itself in the, in the, in the form of wisdom and truth to know exactly how powerful you are, how impressionable you are. How much you matter to the fate beyond of which, you, to fate unknown, you know, or it's certainly unseen up until this point. Fate beyond you. Because the will of fortune is like larger than life it's universal it's it's expansive it's massive it's otherworldly On the bottom. Wow, the Empress. Not only how you are nurtured, you know, like as we are children of the universe, but that you are also mother. Woman, mother, and daughter, all in one. What's that given? Goddess. Goddess energy. And not leaving the masculines out, for sure. But we're talking about the nurturing aspect of creation, of which we all embody. That's part of the pitfall now in creation is that there's not been enough nurturing and the nurturing have been so disparate, the nurturers have been so disparaged that they haven't been operating in their fullest function and, um, and capability. 
it was overpowered and over um, overrun by the protectors who somewhere along the lines got that misconstrued construed and became aggressors against all of creation. And then we absorb that seed as the nurturing force, masculine or feminine still, and reproduced from that insemination to the point where there is more aggression or has been more aggression globally, nationally, universally, then there is nurturing, then there is creativity, love, beauty. Hmm, this is really powerful with this empress coming here. That is like, wow. And the will of fortune, these are some major, major energies here. And this shift is about, I mean, it's like with the will of fortune and Jupiter being the energy that, this is double Leo here. We got Pisces and or Cancer. But when you think about what Jupiter energy does is that it expands whatever it, it connects to. So this is like an accelerated evolution of power here from the source embodied in physical form. So this is really speaking to the um, the advancement and promotion, again, as a way to rebalance those scales of the feminine force, at least rightfully back to the power that she naturally possesses without interruption and interference, at least. And to some, it might look like a great, a great imbalance, you know, to almost seem like the denigration of the masculine energy as the feminine is uh, exalted, but it's just the rebalancing because it's been the other way for so long. I don't know. It's, 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 we're, we're going to be looking at more. Um, I, don't, I don't really know what's been to happen in this election or within this year headed toward the election. But I definitely see a surge in feminine leadership. And even if it's not as head of state as this kind of pronounces, it's like it's going to be so many feminines and um, so many feminine energies. And what well, even masculines that just have more of a feminine uh synergy, you know, like a feminine come from, not to say they have to be gay or anything like that, but just really uh, express from their, more from their feminine nature than say, or at least have a, a healthy balance of both, but e maybe even more expressed than their masculine. But it's going to be a lot of feminine leaders that just, it, it's going to be astounding whether it be in the judicial system and um, and uh, even in uh, popular culture where we already kind of see that pronounced, but not in a way that it's almost being exploited. It's gonna be more, uh, more, I feel where that where it gets to be purified is it'll be more pronounced for empowerment, you know, not like not just a hashtag or just an idea or something cool to jump on board of like really women doing some 
high powered things, making real change, real impact, making a difference, speaking their minds, but in a way that is, again, nurturing of all creation, not just the I am woman, hear me roar, I don't need no man energy, but really a pronounced leadership, a prominent leadership surge of those that can ideally embrace all aspects of creation in a way that truly um, accelerates this evolution in a way that we kind of need to catch up from how long it's been it's been suppressed. If in fact we are talking about, you know, some things that have have occurred that maybe have have expired long ago, then I feel like it's the feminine energy that's going to be able to to catch us up from time lost. And the support system, particularly of those men that when I this is probably what I mean by it being like men that are comfortable in their feminine energy or comfortable expressing out of it. It could also look like just men that find great value in being supportive, you know, that 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 really reverence their position of protection and support for these energies to, as I said, operate in the functions that they can be most productive. You know how, you know, probably not as much of a, um, a resemblance as this, but think about how like the traditional woman was happy to be at home taking care of the kids and the household and you know, making sure her husband was well prepared for whatever he needed to encounter in, in, in the world, you know, like they traditional wives at a time made, um, were proud to, to occupy that role. It's something where that's going to be flipped and it may not necessarily be where it's like necessarily men that now, are thrilled to stay home, even though I'm sure there's an influx of that in the world too, but they're thrilled to stay home and cook and clean. And do, it's, it's not going to look like that. Here's where the pendulum comes back to the middle. It may to some degree, but I feel like it just will be more shared um, support and accountability and where the feminine energies that are empowered for these certain positions may be taken more of, how can I say, like a public, may have more of like a public role or, you know, a, a pub, some type of like more exposed operation or just high powered and involved, even if they're not necessarily in the public eye. But there's something about feminine energy here that is going to absolutely need to have solid support and security. And that, again, that may just look like a man that is okay. His ego is not bruised or threatened having a woman that is high powered and in a leadership position, particularly outside of the home, but maybe to some degree things being kind of, things being kind of circulated around that I identity even at home for you know for the pro for the progressiveness of the family unit and the legacy that they're building together but also to support the purpose and agenda that that wife and or husband may have to the collective overall and like the greater good it's going to be something like that here was that look at that and that kind of flipped out i don't know if you saw it but the six of cups it just kind of like flipped out like that but yeah it's like it's restructuring this these these gender roles and and the dna of um a partnership so that it's not codependent as we've known it to be, as we were conditioned for it to be in the past, it, 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 becomes, it becomes something new. Still with the same familiarity to some degree that you can 
relate to and maybe even reverence some aspects of traditionalism that makes sense respectively you know for for you in the in the in the union that you are creating but it's something about like revolutionizing i guess revolving <laughs> I don't know. um re making a revolutionary adjustment to traditional or conventional concepts and not in a way that is just rebellious for rebellion's sake like i'm i'm not doing i'm not a traditional wife i'm not it's like for some that may or it may be like the role switch off from time to time you know whatever it takes but it, it will be more fluid and it ultimately will be the thing that nurtures really probably rebirths the nation and then nurtures that nation to the maturity to of which it needs to grow to catch up with where the universe is ultimately holding space for it to um evolve if that makes sense well that's going to be at the bottom now so Matter of fact, I'm gonna do this and we'll start over because I don't want that to be at the bottom unfairly. Let's get one more and then I'm out. Getting back to the rest of my holiday. All right, so we got the, um, the four of pentacles here. And that could be those that want to continue to hold on to those old values to even control them, to be more conservative. And what's that here? What's under that? Yeah, and they're going to miss opportunity. Miss grand opportunities of the fortune and favor that comes with being amenable to the evolution as it's universally ordained. Those that refuse, those that resist, will miss out, ultimately. Like, really nothing more to say about it. They will ultimately cut themselves out of the deal because they won't find, and they will not find themselves at home in the world as it's evolving to be. They won't find themselves to have a place, nowhere to get comfortable, nowhere to rest their head, you know, because the ideals that they insist to build a foundation upon or to maintain a faulty foundation upon won't support, will literally not support their livelihood. And it leads right back to here with the Five of Pentacles. So there are some that are coming out of this reality of despair into wealth and abundance. And finally um, becoming the beneficiaries of this infinite seed of which they can continue to plant, you know, without limitation within the devotion of commitment to where, you know, to, to the grounds that, you know, the fields more or less that society or the universe is cultivating through, you know, human existence. Pl planting in season with the universal order, so to speak will yield an unlimited harvest. But then there are those that refuse and, and still want to plant the seeds that they want to grow, the crops that they want to cultivate, even out of season, out of touch, you know, out of order. No sunlight, no water, no nourishment for that, for that crop. 
and they'll ultimately find themselves impoverished. Simple as that. Scarcity. Fighting for every, fighting for a place to exist in a land that should be free for all. That's the condition that, conditioning that we're all breaking free from slowly but surely. And the, per, the perpetrators of that illusion are slowly but surely losing their grips on that control to keep us all in this energy here. And we still though have the responsibility and the, well more so the authority to command our power back out of the hands of control of those that would want to manipulate it for no good of our own siphon it, monopolize it, put it to work for their own ulterior motives. We no longer have to contribute to those conditions for the sake of survival. Mm -mm. That illusion right here, the hermit, that illusion is being broken. This is about mastery. Seeing through the illusions, knowing where we align or, or where we don't. And in most cases, we don't. <laughs> in many cases. And then making the, the higher choice, the greater choice. The more and more we inspire one another to do that, to operate in that power, and ultimately operate within our righteous right to create our destiny. I can't tell if, um, if that's right or not, but I think so. <laughs> um, the more we render the false leadership powerless, we the people have that authority and that influence. And it simply is by the command of our, um, by our, of our own passion and our own energy and what we refuse to invest it in and to lend it to and what we insist on lending it to. And I feel like, you know, finally, somehow, some way, it's coming to be so that we'll finally see we'll finally see like the the harvest of lifetimes of hard labor just for the sake of liberty. So, happy Independence Day. Make sure to separate yourself from these illusions of competition and chaos and confusion where you see them spring up because usually that's the pitfall to reel you in, to distract you from the bigger mission at hand, the bigger prize, the greater advancement. 
there's so much more in store than what we even thought we were fighting for. We just get to stay open to be in reception of that reward holistically, not leaving a, not a cent on the table by way of compromising our integrity, being provoked to anything but love and more love for self, if nothing else, and no one else, and keeping our eyes on the prize, which ultimately is you. <laughs> Everybody knows it oftentimes, but you, but me, but we are the prize. All right, so again, happy Independence Day. By the time this post, who knows if it will still be July 4th. But what matters is that we keep the dream, the mission, the insistence for independence, sovereignty, autonomy, liberation, and freedom alive in our everyday waking lives. All right. So thank you for listening and watching. Until next time, as always, I leave you with peace.